three. One of, the, one of the most interesting aspects of American painting to me is that, of course, there was an early turn toward etchings and things like that to make, make art available to people. But uh, and drawings have always suffered because of the lack of color and, of course, the tremendous color that we have now in our technology. But there is absolutely nothing more enthralling to most artists than to look at a drawing. It's the first intentions. And if you look at this, this, this series of drawings, take a pan across these things, they, they, they are literally a suite. And in a certain sense, if you'd stop and squint and just think of them as, as abstracts, you have a sense of landscape almost. And without any question, doing figures, especially figures of a, you know, perhaps a, someone you're acquainted with or fond of, you, it's definitely a landscape. It's a peaceful landscape. Take this first one here, you see the, the flow, look at this. Almost on, I don't know how intentional on part of the artist, but the, the lines. It's, an, oh, it's intentional, an it's all intentional. Right, an abstraction of thing, it frames the thing. And what's interesting is not off, it's a little bit off center. Mm -hmm. You actually sort of like go around and come into the face. Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing here. Now this is interesting, this is almost like you're saying, well there's two faces now, three. And it, and it also, this creates a sense of time. When you have two things of the same person, you immediately think of different moments. It's like a series of moments. The, the interesting quality here is that all the rest of the things on the show, as I say, are color. But here you are arranging things that in a simple black and white. And it's really, really very, very classical how it's actually in the, exactly the right places. And the intensity of what you want people to look at is, is commanded by the, the definition that you, you went to, to the, what you really want to be looking at, the face of the young lady. And what's almost a little bit dreamy is this, I don't know if that's an erasure or what, but the third, it's almost like the future. It's a very poetic. All drawings are extremely poetic. It's like the first stroke of, on the wall of the caves was literally with a piece of burnt stick from the fire. So this is like, this is primordial stuff. And I don't think the first thing you'd see if you looked up from a fire in a cave would be something like this. And uh, gosh, that's just a, a marvelous thing because usually you, 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 might, you might pose somebody in a kind of like a, almost commercially a way, but there's, there's a, a tremendous vitality about this reclining figure here. This is beautiful. Uh, and uh, again, uh, you, you could have just white, it could have been whited out, but even the placement of the signature and everything, you don't even, you know, who the Carol cares who did? <laughs> but but it, it just pushes forward. There was a man named Boucher who was a very famous portrait painter uh, in, the, uh, in the 50s, 60s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, Rene Boucher. Uh, I recall when I was a kid, uh, uh, he did a cover of uh, Rock, Richard Rogers. Uh, it was, Charcoal and charcoal of Richard Rogers for a cover of a, an album of a, a, a orchestral suites that he did. It has the same quality. So simple. It's deceptively simple. It's not. This isn't. This is talent. And that's. I got to say for that.